I don't have enough plan. I don't have anything planned for those days. We're going to call this City of Galton uh, Council Committee meeting to order February 22nd, 2022, 6 p.m. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Kittrell. Vice Mayor Fennell. Here. Councilman Alexander. Here. Councilman Fan. Here. Councilwoman George is absent. Uh, Councilman Hayes is absent. And Councilwoman Love. Here. And Councilman Overton. Here. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Uh, now, I'm looking for approval for the minutes from February the 8th, 2022. Council approved. Work, work session. Then, okay. Motion by Mr. Alton, the second, Mr. Fan. Any, any question, comments, or correction? If not, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Public recognition at this time. Anyone from the public would like to come forward, please come state your name for the record <coughs> and your address. Good evening, Council. Um, Michelle Juvance, 1335 Long Hollow Pike. And I wanted to um, ask some questions about agenda item number two. Um, I have some questions about the water and sewer 10 year capital improvement plan. Um, $200 million is a lot of money. A lot of money. <clears throat> Our previous director of the utility department told me that in his 40 years on the job, they didn't even spend that much. So my first question is, um, why are we planning to spend over $200 million in only 10 years when we didn't even spend that much in the past 40 years? Prices haven't gone up that much. And my second question, <clears throat> is where is the money going to come from? Are we going to have to borrow it? <clears throat> Councilman Overton, when I attended the budget hearing for the utility department on March 25th of 2021, you said that you all pretty much let them do whatever they want because of the way the department is funded. You said it's funded by customer fees, not by tax dollars. So my question is, how much of this $200 million will need to be borrowed? And can you also answer whether or not um, water and sewer revenue bonds are secured by the full faith and credit of the city? And also, can you answer my question about the reason why you recently changed our rainy fund balance in the general fund from 20% to 25%. And is that in preparation of borrowing more money for the future? Was that for the purpose of preparing in order to raise our borrowing capacity? And another question, um, I'm under the assumption from what Councilman Overton said at that meeting that our water and sewer revenue bonds cannot be paid for with tax dollars. So I wanted to make sure that that's true. Also, I wanted to ask how much of this is for the purpose of accelerating growth. We are already growing too fast, and how much of this um, is being lobbied for by special interest groups and developers and why so much so fast? $200 million is a lot of money. And this kind of scares me because borrowing $200 million is what caused our taxes to go up by 34% in the county. That was caused by borrowing, two, borrowing $100 million for the new school complex and borrowing $100 million for the new courthouse. Those were the two most recent tax increases at the county. So my questions again are, where is the money going to come from? Will we need to borrow it? Are water and sewer revenue bonds backed by the full faith and credit of the city? 
is our higher general fund balance in preparation to increase our borrowing capacity? Do you think our city should go into more debt? If debt is needed to provide this $200 million, what kind of bonds are being planned? We already have $61 million of debt. And if I include interest, the total is $80 million. Where is this $200 million going to come from? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Barney. Anyone else from the public? Anyone else from the public? Okay. <coughs> My name is Joe DeBoer and I live at 1007 Hart Street here in Gallatin. Uh, I'm going to make this about as simple as I can make it. We may have to borrow $200 million as far as that's concerned. But in what I have seen from this board and from our community, we do not go out and spend money like it's coming, out of, coming off of trees. And the point is that the uh, water department We'll be using that money and uh, to upgrade our facilities and make sure that we are compliant with the law of the of this country, and we have to we have to re, uh, put money back into our our systems. I don't know the particulars on this, but I will say this: this august body right here does not spend money like it's going out of style. Period. And I have to stick up for them for that because that's not what Gallatin is, period. Now, there are some people in this community that think that uh, they have a, a situation by which they don't know their people that work in our city. In fact, I've been around a little bit, watched these folks for several years, and some of these Johnny-come-latelys have come to town that don't know about what our situation is and the type of people that we have and the type of operation that we do. It's not a tax and spend place. We might borrow the money in order for us to be able to get the product that we need and then we'll pay for it in our fees. Our fees are not astronomical. And we're talking about the water department. And there was a question I asked a while back, a gentleman asked the question, why don't you go ahead and pay for stuff? Well, that would mean you had to go up on your fees. What would happen then? The little old lady out there that's on Social Security would have a problem because she has to pay too much for a water bill. Simple. Okay? And, like I say, at, at, at the time that Miss Rachel came to this podium and said we need to go up on our rainy day fund in order for us to get a better rate for our bond issue, that is absolutely positively correct. Okay? And that's the way it should be. Now, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to spend a little money because guess what? For those people who come in here late, we're trying to catch up. And thanks God, Mayor Brown and, and her staff and the people in our community are stepping up to the plate to do the job. And with regard to that, we have another thing on the, on the uh, agenda tonight that I'm going to have to stand up here and say yes for. And that has to do with this deal on the gun range. The only thing I have against that gun range is this. There should be more than just our policemen go up there and use it. Simple. And under the direction of Chief Bandy, we could do that if we want to. Because guess what? We cannot afford umpteen million policemen. Guess who's going to be the first in line for that issue? Don't come to my house. Okay? Don't come knocking on my door. 
And a lot of people in this community have done the same thing, okay? So with that being said, we need to know who the people are to back our police department and, and show positive uh, ability to shoot a firearm if that, that be the case. And uh, with that, folks, I bid you adieu. Thank you, Mr. Gore. We thank you, Jimmy, and you too, Sean, and the rest of you, even Craig. <laughs> Anyone else on the public recognition, you may come forward at this time. Anyone else on the public recognition? If not, public recognition is now closed. Now we have mayor comments. There we go. Um, nothing this evening, but thank you. Wow. Yes, I could. Going on and on and on. All right, we'll move right on to the agenda then. Uh, See? Mr. David Brown on uh, Thompson Park. <clears throat> David Brown, Parks Director. Well, we've come to a point at Thompson Park that we will have to do some improvements of the lights. So I come here tonight and I send in your package the cost of replacing the lights at the big ball field. They've just, we've been thinking about this for three years. It's been going on and going on. And it was going to be in next year's budget, but we found out here in the late fall that we can't get them serviced. The electric department will not service them anymore. They're just... Uh, the age of them, the poles are over 30 year old, and they just gotta, it's time to replace them. So what we wanna do is, is uh, come back with an ordinance next Tuesday night to uh, replace the lights at Thompson Park. Uh, our baseball leagues are growing. You'll see in our next year budget, more lights. Uh, we had planned on like doing one a year, one field a year to catch up. I think we'd be okay. Uh, and this field was, proposed in next year's budget too. So that's what we're asking for. Brown, this is a, it's gonna be replaced with Gavin has steel poles. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you'll see now, nowadays the company that we deal with is Musco, one of the nation's top. This is a 25 year nothing. We don't do anything for 25 years. If a bub goes out, they come fix it. Uh, most of the companies now are doing the, the maintenance free because it's so hard now to even get people to come do it. Uh, fire department used to do it, but with these new trucks and everything going off into those fields and everything off the pavement and everything, just not, uh, I don't think it's feasible and just not good to do with these big heavy trucks. So Motion sent it to council. Been a motion made by Mr. Olson, second by Mr. Fanny. Any questions or comments? David, is, that's probably used every night, isn't it, during this baseball Will season? Be. It, in the last couple of years, it's only been used mostly in the daytime because the lights are so bad. Uh, but it's probably that's needed why at night. we get more leagues now that wants to play, and we've got some tournaments and things. And when you only have, like, one large field, it's hard to have a, a pretty good-sized tournament, even if we use station camp. And they use our fields and, and the high school field things, so... It would help us on that too. Well, I'm sure it's needed. That's all. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye, Senator. Uh, aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Kellogg, Public Utility Superintendent, Utility Department 10 Year Capital Improvement Program. Good evening, Mayor Brown, members of the Council. Uh, David Kellogg, Superintendent of Public Utilities. You have in your packet tonight our proposed 10-year capital improvement plan. It's really a plan that we put <coughs> in place, been working on about a year now, just to put a formal plan in place for our development and uh, future growth of our system. Uh, part of it is for addressing uh, regulatory needs. Part of it is to address aging infrastructure. And part of it is to address uh, growth in the system. Uh, probably the biggest item on the plan is the water plant. Uh, the original water plant was built in 1964, so the structure out there is well over 50 years old. Um, last year, as part of the EPA, America Water Infrastructure Act uh, plan, 
we did a risk and resiliency assessment of our system. One of the things that was identified was generators at the water plant. So we looked at doing a project to add generators at the water plant. Um, that project, the engineering estimate for that project came in at about two and a half million. Uh, when you look at that with some other improvements that need to be made, you get to the point where you have to look at whether it's more feasible to replace or just to keep patching on a 50 year old plant. So what we're proposing in the plan is a, a replacement of the plan with current technology um, and size to meet the current needs of the system and the future needs because it's we're rated right now at 16 million. The proposed plan will be a 24 million plant with the capacity to go to 36 and 48. So it'll it'll be designed to meet the needs of our city uh, well into the future. Um, the raw water intake was originally built in 1954. Uh, we've experienced some issues with that this summer. Um, and it's just time to, to start looking at that process. Process to get through the core to get a permit to withdraw and to do any modifications is gonna be probably a year, year and a half to do. So I wanted to get in front of you early so that we can start that process and start working through it with that one and all the plants, uh, plant projects. Some of the projects on the list or placeholders, they'll not be done in 10 years. I know they won't be done in 10 years, but I wanna get prepared for when things come down the pike. The wastewater plant expansion, we just completed that plant in 2010, but once we reach 80% capacity on the plant, we have to start design for an expansion to be able to maintain effluent limits. Um, some of the water line replacement projects are in response to the EPA lead and copper rule. If it's a galvanized water line, they're going to ask us to replace them. Um, that's one of the sources they see lead in line and water lines is attached to old galvanized water lines. We still have a few in the system. On this plan is uh, projects to replace them. Um, so it's continuing projects that we've been doing. Our sanitary sewer in improvement program. Um, we pipe burst and replace sewers. Every two to three years, we go through a section of town and try to replace them just to make sure that uh, we're cutting out the extra rainwater in the system. Some of the projects are um, aligning with road projects. Some of them are projects to, you know, for growth that we know we have areas that we have growth in. Um, what uh, the staff and our consulting engineer gone through about the last year just to try to Try to put it in place. A lot of this was in Mr. Gregory's head. He had a plan that he knew he wanted to do. This just formalizes that plan and gets us a kind of a roadmap to go forward. And I'd be I know that you push. I, I was just going to say he's put a lot of effort into this and has talked to so many people and contemplate and is contemplating all the ways to um, um, prepare um, provide for these things financially. And it's a diverse mix of of payment options as we work through them each as they come along. Um, he's trying to navigate a lot of different streams of revenue and, and what we'll do. But I appreciate the long range plan on this that is really going to put our water systems and gas system in, um, in a great place for another century, you know, really. That's the plan. That's, that's where we, we we've been uh, and that's what I want to get us to. Mr. Kellogg, after the meeting tonight, you heard the concerned citizen that spoke before this. Would you please explain to her the difference in rate payers and taxpayers after the meeting tonight, please? Thank you. Any more questions or comments from Mr. Kellogg? So y'all are just presenting this to us to let us know that it's needed for a long-range kind of yes. plan. Um, well, I've always been proud of our water system here. We want to keep it as as healthy and good as it has always been. Well, and it's very timely as we approach budget, right? <clears throat> well, and that's part of what triggered it for me last year is in the budget process last year. Um, you were picking up with the... I wanted to be able to... I want to be able to see what's being spent, where it's going, and have a plan. And for me, this gives me a plan to say, okay, this is where we need to, need to work towards. You'll keep it on that roll where we're always looking, be able to look 
Yes. I, this will be a living document. It'll change every year uh, as projects come off and as new things are identified to come on. Um, like I said, there are some on here that may never get done, but I wanted them to be identified in here in case they were needed. I didn't come to the council right. and say, I need $10 million for a project, and you say, I've never heard anything about it. Right, and I appreciate that. It's also good because you can also find the opportunities along the way when different projects come to the city or, you know, like you said, different road improvements or, or other city improvements happen that we can marry some of these things together where they make the most sense. And so I really appreciate having the document and having the plan, and um, it helps everybody know, too, everybody be on the same page. I'm not going to say what their people always say. You never know. You may be hit by a bus. I'm not going to say that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kellogg. <coughs> Moving on to item number three, Carwell Park. Uh, Mr. Nick Toll, city engineer. Has it been almost eight years now, Mayor? Yes. It's been in office? Yes. Probably one of the first things that um, Mayor Brown said to me as she came into office is, is how she had an interest in, in trying to revitalize uh, the Nat Caldwell Park. Uh, many of you uh, have grown up in this area and have seen Nat Caldwell Park maybe back in its glory days when um, it had uh, lots of skiing uh, ventures that occurred in that area. Uh, but now as we drive by it, it it's kind of sad. Um, is kind of silted in and, and a lot of debris and, and things have washed um, into that cove. And, and so we've been trying to talk to the Corps for years uh, on, on what are our options and how can we move forward with at least dredging this area out, if not making even more improvements and, and trying to get to somewhere where this is a, a real amenity to the community. Um, and so after many years of discussions and, and trying to find ways to find uh, money through the core. Um, we, we really have come to a dead end, um, but um, it, it allows us a, a different avenue. And, and so talking to the, these guys with the core, it, their, their best um, suggestions to us are that we do what they call an out grant um, on, on the area. And that would be something that would require the city of Gallatin to take over maintenance um, on the area, just like we do with, with other uh, core areas like the Lock 4 Park, uh, for example, um, and the Rogers Field, just right around from Nat Caldwell Park, where we, we actually maintain those areas as park areas instead of the core maintaining them. So to do that, uh, we have to develop a plan, um, and, and this will allow us opportunities to move forward. And so we brought this to the Planning Commission back in January, and and uh, shared this, this concept and this idea with them. Let me see if I can, I'm just gonna skip ahead uh, to, to this overall plan uh, that, that shows really everything. And I'm not gonna go into great detail on it because this is just kind of the, the pie in the sky, big dreams um, out there. We, we just really want to, to clean this place up and, and at <coughs> least get it to where it looks much nicer than it does now at the very least. Uh, but as you can see on, on this plan, if I, if I start from the left side going to the right, we already have soccer fields that are being um, maintained uh, by the city of Gallatin and, and some, uh, some interested folks uh, will cut grass and things like that out there that, that want to have soccer fields on that side of town. Uh, but you'll see some green lines that run through uh, the park areas connecting Rogers soccer fields um, all the way over to um, the Kennesaw Farms area. Uh, those are, are greenway trails that are being represented there. Uh, there are some blue lines, uh, some blue dash lines that, that run through the park area, uh, and, and those would be kayak trails, so to speak. So they're kayak paths that have some touch points and, and launch points where they can come and go to and fro and kayak around in the area. And we do have this set up for a, an actual ski course. Um, if you can see right in the middle where the, the old ski course used to be, uh, we think this is ambitious, but um, we, we are proposing that in this, this pie-in-the-sky plan. And so that, that is the, the ski course that kind of everything really revolves around. And we're setting this up in a way that uh, it can be maintained much easier than it is now. Um, in other words, this is where the water begins to slow down after it comes down Station Camp Creek. Um, and so when, with water slowing down, you start to have the sediment dropping out 
Um, and that, some of it may be from development, but a lot of it is just natural sedimentation that happens uh, with stream erosion and bank erosion. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to happen whether we're growing as a city or not. And so we want to have, we actually are going to set this thing up, and I'm not, I won't go into the details, but set this thing up so that it's, it's much easier to clean out. Uh, we'll have a, a, an area that will, will basically attract the deposits uh, and, and allow us to clean it out in a, a much more consistent and productive way. And so, and finally, as we get on around to the other side, uh, there's a couple of other little things that I'm not bringing up, but we have talked with um, the Foxland um, development, uh, and you may or may not know, but they have dreamed uh, for a long time about a harbor um, uh, over here on, on this side of um, Old Hickory Lake. And so they have been in discussions with the Corps, and we're showing it here just as we're in the city of Gallatin's really not participating in this, but we think it, it lends some credence to what we want to do as the city to, to the rest of this development. And we hope that we'll find some partners um, in, in the folks that, that uh, uh, operate and live in the Foxland development, the folks that, that live in and operate the Kennesaw development, and um, maybe even some of the other potential um, developers in the area, that they'll have some interest in this project as well. And this could be uh, an opportunity for a public-private partnership. Uh, if we don't have a plan like this in place, uh, then it's hard for an investor to come in and say, yes, I, I see what you're saying and I want to invest in this. And so that's what this allows us to do. And before we spend any money on anything uh, moving forward, it would come back to you, the city council, to talk about you know, what those steps may be. And so I do know the first step of spending money, and the first step of spending money is a very detailed uh, and expensive um, environmental assessment uh, that is required through what the federal government calls a NEPA process. It's the National Environmental Protection Act. And so for us to do anything uh, for this, this project, uh, we have to go through that environmental assessment process. And my plan is to, br is to include that. The mayor uh, will, will include that, um, I think, in her proposed budget because I know she'll be very interested in it. So I want to we're working on um, a budget number for that right now, and we'll have that complete by the end of the week and, and have that in our budget request um, for the 22-23 budget. So right now what I'm asking from you is, and I don't have a resolution together. I was out a few days last week, and I didn't get this from my office, um, but um, we'll put, it, put together a resolution that is just supporting this plan. Um, and saying that this is something that um, you're supportive of and would like to move forward with. And then again, as we go, you'll see all the pieces come together uh, with, with requests for appropriations and usually through the budget process. So you just, want, uh, you just want our support, not, we're not spending money right now, just that's, support. That's correct. Most to send it on. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, we've talked about just simply going in and dredging, and the Corps is reluctant to allow us to just do that uh, because they talk about a lot of the eco ecology and the, the environmental habitat that um. supposedly that's been created by all this driftwood and uh, sedimentation that's occurred. And so what we want to do with the environmental assessment is, is show the Corps that it will be more productive for us to, to go into a direction where we can create some recreational areas and create actually some more healthy environmental areas. And so uh, instead of just letting a lot of this stuff happen naturally, we would like to, we'll let it happen naturally, but in some, some better and healthier controlled areas. Yeah, I, 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 uh, want to go, I want you to go back to the graphic and point out kind of the um, ecological habitat area because while the Corps has contended that it would be disturbing an ecological habitat, We've kind of contended that we can make a healthier one with with more life supported within there. So here are the the core has habitat classifications. Here are the current core habitat classifications, and and most of it is just um, you know the the open uh, lake area. There is some riverine uh, classification, uh, but they really don't have anything classified beyond that right now. Um, what we're proposing is to come in and actually do some sediment removal and, and deposit it in areas that make more sense for habitat to become more healthy. And there's, Bill was excited about potential for bald cypresses. 
Um, there's a lot of nice, nice, uh, pretty animals there. And then you can see some of the shoreline stuff. I know I have a, well, I thought I had a slide in here that uh, gets to the green. I was area. really just looking for the green areas that kind of showed the underwater habitat. Th this is, yeah, this is showing the shoreline stabilization practices where we would be able to set up some areas where we could actually deposit some of this stuff that would be dredged actually here still in this same area. You know, I know Craig remembers, but down there in Hendersonville, we're, we can't we're, uh, hear you. Microphone. Thank you. I know Craig remember, remember, and probably Susan and Paige, uh, Hendersonville dredged that area right there where you're coming in Hendersonville, and it was so much uh, sediment to come out. If you remember, they've like formed an island down through right. there. But, uh, I mean, it really looks nice. And, you know, growing up as a kid, and, and Paige shared with me some photos from back in the day. I remember when the ramp was there, and I remember when there was no trees up and down Gallatin Road, and you could see the lake, and it was just a beautiful area. And I, I hope that we can support this, and actually sometime in, you know, the near future that we could actually move on something right here. And we talked a lot with, um, with the Corps about that Drake's Creek project. And um, that they was got one different of, rules. That was one of those that it, it happened 20 years ago, and they're like, that won't happen again kind of really? stance. Um, so because they actually did have some core funding uh, that, that went towards, not, it wasn't 100% core funded, but it did go towards that project. And we're asking so for we help were, from our legislators. Yeah, <laughs> we are, and again, this is something that helps us ask for Right, help right. Because now and it puts us in a position where we have a solid plan that we can move forward with. A couple of things I just want you all to be aware of. Um, one is that just in our, well, I shouldn't say our, because I had nothing to do with it, in their kind of cursory exploration, that there really wasn't a lot of healthy either aquatic life or right. plant life or much of anything like there. And I think most people feel that way when they drive by. So we do think that we can create that and actually create a habitat where one really doesn't exist and, what, and, and what's there is actually going to deteriorate. Um, second thing is, is that for probably close to eight years, I've been telling Rogers Group and Foxland and Fairview and Goodall and Southeastern and the Old Hickory Ski Club and I don't know who else that we're coming after them because we want, you know, their partnership. And they all say, oh, we'd love to see that help happen. We'll definitely participate. Yeah. And then the final thing that I really want you to be aware of because it is a unique challenge is because of how that is, we can't get a barge in there like you typically would for dredging. And so the dredging operation is going to have to be something unique and different. And everybody's talked about different ideas, and some of those surrounding owners have been willing to contemplate um, participating as far as a place to put the sediment. But it's going to be a unique challenge. But, man, it's just such an ugly eyesore for Gallatin. And, and beyond that, um, if you don't know, Nat Caldwell, it was named for him because he was a very important person that really impacted our whole um, electric electricity structure here in the South. I mean, he was very big with TVA and um, was actually a journalist, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, and he lived there. Unfortunately, he also died there in that creek. But, um, you know, it's just to me disrespectful that it's not preserved in a more fitting tribute to a person as it should be. And then the other thing that you may not know, I just learned this from my uncle. You may remember it. I don't know. But my uncle said that the worldwide of sp world, wait, wide world of sports actually broadcast from their, their water ski championship one year. I, don't rem I remember, you know, going there and watching water skiing competitions, but I didn't remember that. But they said he said some sportscaster was there, and they were set up there, and they were – Broadcasting, like, I thought that was interesting. Any other question or comments? We do have a motion to second to send it on. Any other question or comments? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Uh, Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Tuttle. Item number four, ordinance number 02203-10, appropriating unspent 2014 and 2016 bond fund. Ms. Nichols. Good evening. A few months back when we were discussing the water intrusion at Fire Hall 5, I mentioned to you that we had a funding source for this until all the issues with the contractor and the designer and all that stuff was settled, um, where we had made a deposit on Greenlee Extension with the state. They ended up not using all of our money, and so they returned $582,000 to us. 
that's from a 2014 <coughs> bond, so we really need to get that spent. So this ordinance is to take the bulk of that and put it towards the Fire Hall 5 project and then take the remaining balance of that 582000 on Greenlee and reappropriate it for the uh, police and fire, the gun range. And then there are a number of small projects in the 2014 and 2016 bonds where those particular projects are complete and there were small balances left. So I'd like to zero out all of those balances and put them towards the gun range. And then that leaves us with $34,000 that we were short to fully cover the list that Rosemary presented to you two weeks ago. Um, and since sales tax revenues are coming in so well, I think we could easily budget that remaining 34000 as an increase in revenue and an increase in expense, and we would not hit the fund balance for any of this. Second. Motion by Mr. Hayes. Second by Mr. I got one question. Are we going to recoup our money, Susan, off of that fire hall? Are we spending money on it? That's the goal. Okay. I don't know how far along we are. I know they're doing work out there, and it looks really nice, so... Hope they get them corrected. But you know I sure goes, hope we, it probably won't be for years if we do. I sure hope we get all our money back. Motion by Mr. Hayes and second by Mr. Fennell. Any other question or comments? Ms. Nichols? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number five. The financial yes. reports for December and January are included in your packet. Um, Property tax revenues are coming in very well. Sales tax revenues are coming in very well. Glad to answer any questions. But. This is for December, January. Yes, sir. On trend, we hope it holds. Thank you. All right. Okay. We're on other business. Any council member have anything that they want to bring up on other business? All right. Any department heads? Oh, I love it. If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? To adjourn. Wow. Okay.